Shalom. Call her Lord Yahweh Bashan Lama Shai, Bashan Makak Madash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerely risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird among the heathen nations that look like the heathen nations. And to the aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. Um, and this is a video from, from Go Black to Africa. I really despise and hate that name. Um, and they're always talking about biblical things and the Israelites and then talking about Africa. The Israelites are not from Africa. Neither does their history start in Africa. The Israelites were, were refugees in Africa, ended up going into slavery from Africa. A portion of the Israelites in it. Because the Israelites were all over Europe, ruling Europe, as we're about to get into. But uh, as I like to start when I use uh, a video from this Go Black to Africa, I like to uh, start here in the book of Galatians. All right? Because the Africans were the enemies to the Israelites. All right? Um, and this is Galatians 4 and 26, and it reads... But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. So his mother, you know, the, the mother of us all is actually Israel, not Africa. All life began in Israel, spread from there. And Israel is just above Africa, but it's not Africa. All right. So. Uh, so that without any further ado, we're going to let this uh, this young Edomite ish woman uh uh, Edomite looking woman. I don't know if she, I haven't tested her spirit. I don't know her. Uh, but uh, she definitely looks like uh, uh, Edom to me. And she kind of, and it's not even what she looks like. It's just her spirit. All right. She just feels like an Edomite. But uh, let's let her hear what she has to say about her worshiping of this black Madonna and how these people all over Europe make pilgrimages to it. Okay. So a lot of these Europeans know it's just these Westerners that don't know. OK, and it's not only black Madonnas all over Europe, but, you know, it's it's the images of the of the Moors and, and, and dark men all over Europe as well. All right. I got a movie uh, that I'm watching, um, you know, and it's, it's centered around Charles the fourth of, uh, you know, and 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 he and he's calling him a Jacobite. And, you know, but yet you got an all all Edomite cast, you know, and that's a lie. That's a complete and total lie. All right. But let's let her let's let her uh, say what she has to say. And this isn't going to be a long video, but it's, I, you know, but I hope that it's going to be very edifying. So here we go. The Black Madonna, what she is, why she's so important, and most importantly, what her darkness really is. At this point, I've made at least three pilgrimages to different Black Madonnas across Europe, and I want to share with you not only what gets me so excited and so connected to her, but just really looking into what her significance is across history and across experience. So in our discussion of the Divine Feminine, maybe the Black Madonna is not somebody you hear about right away, but she is the, one of the, the figures... The Divine Feminine, which, which means she is to be worshipped according to them. There's nothing divine about the Madonna. There was nothing divine about Mary. All right. Mary was not to be worshipped. At all. There's no scripture in the Bible anywhere that tells you to bow down and pray to Mary. All right. That's that woman worship. That's that Babylonian influence in Christianity. And Christianity is not of the Bible. It is not of God. Christianity is made up by men. And they use the Bible as a weapon. All right. And then they whitewash the characters of the, of the Bible. Of the divine feminine that holds Ugh. the most fervor and excitement even today. Countless millions make pilgrimage to Black Madonnas every year. The Black Madonna of Einsiedeln in Switzerland gets about 500,000 visitors a year. The Black Madonna of Montserrat in Spain gets about 1 million. And the Black Madonna of Czestochowa in Poland gets 4 million pilgrims yearly. And all these were strongholds uh, of Jacob, you know, in, in times past. And they popped them up quick. <laughs> let me put them on the screen and let them, you know. Million. And the Black Madonna of Chesterhova and Poland. There we go. Yeah, they popped them up quick and popped them right off the screen. See? 
show you, but keep her face in, in the screen, right? And she, but she's talking about the importance of them. But this is Exodus 20 and, and, and 3. These are very basic and very important scriptures. And it says, thou shall have no other gods before me. So you can't be bowing down, to, especially a woman. All right? Thou shall have no, no other gods before me. Thou shall not make unto me any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. All right. So these the whole fish sign and all that, all those are abominations, man, and really pissed the Lord off. All right. And now and Christianity was basically used as a weapon to bring forth. They were trying again the whole Babylonian one world order. That's what the word Catholic means. The, the word Catholic means uh, uh, universal. The Bible is not universal and salvation is not universal. All right. So let's get into a, a couple of things just to prove that point. What I was saying about, you know, all the images and the and the and the uh, relics that prove that Negroes were ruling so-called Negroes, the Israelites. All right. were ruling uh, all of Europe during the dark ages, during during the time of the. Uh, uh, you know, the Byzantine Empire all the way up until all basically all the way up until the the 1600s. All right. They started losing power. They lost Portugal and Spain in 1492. The Edomites started coming back into power. All right. And the, the Edomites are, are are people who look like the, the lady that's on the screen. All right. They came back into power. They started coming into power in the late 1300s. Um, and by, you know, 100 years later, by 1492, they got Portugal and Spain, you know, Cristobal Colon, who the world eagerly calls Christopher Columbus, you know, he sailed over here, you know, the Moors, the, you know, the Moors scattered, some of the Moors went into slavery, some of them uh, came with Christopher uh, Cristobal to the Americas to help enslave their own people, Moors also came over here to America and helped set up the colonies, it's just so much history. That they've completely left out. But let's go into a few scriptures uh, to just, you know, give the the uh, the breakdown of what the the Jews, the tribe, the you know, the Judeans, not the Jews, all right, uh, the Judeans actually look like. You know, the the Hebrews from the tribes of Judah, including the Lord. This is uh, Hebrews, I think it's seven and fourteen, right? And it reads. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribes Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So the Lord came out of the tribe of Judah. All right, he was a uh, he was an Israelite. All right, let's see, because uh, Paul, you know, pretty much told you he was an Israelite from the tribe of. Uh, Benjamin, because, you know, a lot of people make the, the horrific mistake and say Paul was a Roman. He was a Roman. He, well, he was a Roman citizen, but he was a, but by heritage, you know, he was uh, an Israelite. All right. Just like when he tells you that the, 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 the promises and the blessings, you know, and the service of God. Matter of fact, let me just get it. This is uh, Romans 9 and 4, and it reads, well, you know what, I'm going to start at 3. All right. And this is clearly one of my favorite sets of scriptures this, this Roman, the ninth chapter is this fire chapter. But it says, uh, for I wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, for my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Remember, he said kinsmen. Why? Because in Corinthians, second Corinthians 11 and 22, it reads, are they Hebrews? And this is Paul speaking. All right. He said, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. So it was all about the Israelites. All right. And the Lord was from what? The tribe of Judah, which was the fourth uh, son of Jacob. All right. And the head tribe of Israel. But once again, back in Romans 9, it reads, For I wish that myself were accursed from Hamashiach, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. All right. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who was over all. All right. God bless forever. Amen. So the Lord came back for the flesh of the Israelites, his people, his kinsmen. 
All right. And he's from the tribe of Judah. OK, so let's go back to the Old Testament and let's see what the Bible says that the Judites look like. This is uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2. And it reads, Judah mourneth and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And it's amazing how people will throw a fit, a hissy fit when this scripture is brought out and say, well, it doesn't mean that. And it doesn't mean. And, and it's like, no, all of a sudden, you know, you, you're black when they want you to be black, when they want you to be the black Hebrew Israelites, right? When they want to demonize you. But when it says that the, that the Jews were black, all of a sudden they got a problem with it. No, because when you look that scripture up, all right, it tells you clearly in the Hebrew, the word, the Hebrew word there for black is kodar, which means dark skin. All right. So they know, and as you're looking at this Madonna and child, this Marian child, all right, that's what you're looking at. They were black unto the ground. They're really brown. If you're looking at them, they're chocolate brown. They're not black at all. You know, the background that the, uh, the image is sitting in is black. All right. They're brown. I always tell me about that damn black word. All right. One more scripture. This is in my, another one of my favorites on the subject matter is Lamentation 4 and 8. Because it makes it, it, it tells you their skin that's upon them. All right. Um, and Lamentation 4 and 8 reads, their visage is blacker than a coal, meaning they're dark, very dark. They are not known in the streets, no, because they're called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and whatever else, wherever else they're scattered, right? Their skin cleaver to their bones, it is withered, and it has become like a stick. They were, well, they were starving, but nevertheless, it lets you know that they were dark, complected people with woolly hair. So was the angels, and so was God. So with that, I want to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekach, Wa'ababa, Ba'al, Kwam, Yasharala, Shalom.